Hello and welcome to JTV Raw, my name is Jamie O'Neill and you're watching Friday Night Boxing. Um, before anybody starts their shape with the glasses, I've had a migraine the whole day and I'm trying to get through this as best I can. Uh, I hope you enjoy the show. First up, training out of O'Neill's, we've got the three new Kynock uh, signings. So Gary Juicy had a pro fight just over a year ago and he's looking to get back in the ring as soon as he can. Uh, Fahid Mohammed and Shane Young, uh, after having a long amateur career, are looking to make the transition to pro. Brave. Alright guys, my guest today is Gary Ducey from, uh, well originally from the Neil's Boxing Club, but you're now part of the, the Canucks team. Aye, originally from the Neil's, aye. So, um, the gyms are just back, but as a, a pro fighter, you, saw, uh, you went back a bit earlier, innit? Aye, we went back uh, a couple of months ago, aye. So I was speaking to Sam, uh, which would have been last week, and he was saying that um, a lot of the, the guys fail Neil's, we got to Kynock. Um Was it you just have an issue getting into your gym? Aye, there was, like, the gym was shut down, it was the government that shut that gym down, so that was handy for us. Brian obviously got a key for uh, Canucks gym, so yeah, it was handy. No, I mean, go so it's, it's been it's been a year since your, your pro debut. Um, so the lockdown didn't they, they really do anybody any favours. But was your, was you had one pro fight, um, which you won. I won um, what's going to happen now? Yeah. Three, four more fights, just get my confidence in that back up, enjoy it again, and hopefully target for a title. Well, that's what I'm thinking anyway. So is it difficult to move into uh, the professional sort of side and then keep up? Because like, I, I know we've been talking about like, how difficult it is sometimes to get to get sponsors and a lot of boxers, especially during lockdown, um, like you need to fight to earn money. And it's a, it's a difficult situation for everybody to be in, but most of a boxer who needs to be able to perform. It's hard for people to start with. Uh, it's just trying to like shifting tickets away, sponsorship, and the training that's different as well. Like adapting for amateur onto pros, so it's all, it's all different in that kind of way. Uh, but I'm adapting now, and I've got good a good team around me, so looking forward. To it. So um, also your cat is Paul Murphy's based. Um, yeah. uh, he's Phil Neal's as well originally. Um, we're hoping to talk to him, but he's, I think he's a class. He might be on this show, we don't know yet. We'll find out. <laughs> we don't know yet, yeah, but we'll, we'll find out. But um, is it good to have another pro fighter at, at your sort of your gym? Definitely. Uh, me and Paul grew up together like, on way on Neil, so we were always sparring together. And it's good to see him achieving what he wants to achieve as well. Obviously, he's got a, a far way to go, so it's, it's handy having him in the gym as well. So, really good, thanks. So you said there about the the transition for being like an amateur fighter to um, a pro fighter. Um, that's one of the things I, again I was talking to Sam Kynock about was um, and Jay Carrigan McFarlane. They were saying sometimes it's it's a, it's a kind of different setup because you're trying to sell tickets, you're trying to make a name for yourself, you're trying to like get fights. And and right now it's it's there's not a lot of shows going on. Um, there might not be any shows in Scotland for a while, so it's like looking uh, Sam was saying even looking abroad um, when opportunities happen if if they are starting to open up. So did you think that first of all? Do you feel for people that are moving, transitioning from amateur to pro, and maybe not realising how tough this game is? And secondly, um, would you be willing to take fights, whether it be in an empty arena down south, or, or if you had to go go abroad, would you take it? It's, it's really difficult for people moving from amateur, especially in well, where everything's going on now as well. You know what I mean? So it's harder to sell tickets. It's, you're, you're going out there. I would take a fight with the audience here. I'd just fight every week if I could. But aye. That's it. So if you had an opportunity to fly across, like, I don't know, aye. what's wrong with that? I definitely would, aye. Maybe we could, would we be able to come with I just, I just love the sport, so I would just, uh, I would just go there and do that, no. So it's funny, because some boxers, like, if they're just, uh, I think, if that maybe this is upside to amateur, I think if you're fighting amateur, it's not always, like, a, a, an environment where it's a bit more it's pressured obviously any fight's pressured but if you're going into a professional fight in front of a big crowd or not it could, there could be a lot of pressure on you to, to perform or not whereas Jay Carrigan says he doesn't think he would do well in an empty arena because he feeds off the crowd and then you've got other boxers that maybe from an amateur perspective they've never sometimes they, they, like if they're fighting in tournaments there's not a big crowd there Um so I don't really have a question for that. Just for what you say, like, yeah. is that it's a different, yeah. it's a different game. With the crowd there, like my family, when they are cheering me on, I really thrive and I try to push on even more. But if if there wasn't a crowd there, I, I think I'd still do well. You know what I mean? So 
Yep. So after, um, what were your thoughts after your your first fight? What was that? Sorry? So after your first fight, what did you did you come out thinking? I thought it was good. I thought I done well. Four rounds was, I was fit for it anyway. You know what I mean, the the guy was, he was a tough a tough boy, but I, I thought like. I was sitting on my good shots and that, so and changing my angle on that a wee bit as well, but it's just try to learn, just always try to learn in the pro game, yep. It's like, it's, it has been shit, that's the thing, like, because it's a lot of people are in a position where, as you said, that this is how you make money, and uh, we know that, that you're looking for sponsorships, so if it is businesses, um, you are based up in, is, is Motherwell, no? Oh, uh, 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 Canvas Lanks, I'm shit with errors. I'm feeding on Chapel Song, we know the West End as soon as it's at Partick. That's it, I can get to the city centre and that's about it. Um, so, there is businesses out in Canvas Lang or, or about even uh, larger businesses are looking to sponsor uh, an upcoming. Well, it's obviously get in touch and we'll put you in touch um, with, with O'Neill's and they can sort you out. But um, in an ideal world, when would you want to be back in the ring fighting? Soon as October time, I mean. I'd, I'd fight in October, just try to get my fitness back up a wee bit, but I'd fight right away. Did the lockdown make it diff more difficult for you to get in? Like Jay was saying, like he, he lost weight because he wasn't in the pub, he says, <laughs> but um, he wasn't always able to get into the, the gym at the beginning. All the gyms were shut. You said you've used Kynock Gym to sort up when, when you could, but did you find it difficult to keep up with training when everything was just on lockdown? I was just kind of coming back anyway for training. I had a, quite a long layoff, so I was just coming back. It was Brian Murphy that messaged me and he got my head in that right again, so it was actually better for me that the lockdown happened. So, But I was, I was still doing my own training, like runs and that, but it was actually better for me. It so gave you time, like, even for like your mental health and stuff like that. So it's not something we always, we always talk about, like... Um, I, I was. I keep saying G, right? But it's just because we had a pure in-depth discussion about it. But um, we were talking about like the come downs for boxing and how you can go. You perform in a show, you you win, and then your highs hit, and then you come right down. I and he says that it's a quite lonely thing. And the thing is, is that it's it's not like we don't know this exists. I, I'm constantly in touch with her. Um, but I'm very close to both Cash and Ahmed, as I keep mentioning to people. But, like after their fights. I'm very conscious of that when everybody goes away and ev like everybody that's came to get tickets, um, I need to keep in touch with them just to be like, oh, how's things? Because even if they've won, like the come down afterwards is like, all right, what do I do now? Where's my next fight coming? Would it? And it's and it's a, a, a dangerous position to be in for a lot of people as well. You need a schedule. You need to stay focused. Or even though you've won that fight, there's always bigger and better challenges. Our fight just could be around the corner, you know what I mean? So our title, you know what I mean? So you always have to keep yourself fit and ready. Do you um, keep an eye on other boxers? I know, it's, again, it's been difficult because a lot of people haven't been performing, but do you keep an eye on other boxers and fight, all right, I want to fight this guy or that's somebody that I could take? And then how, how if you did want that fight, how would it go about? I, I keep I keep eye on all, all the boys at my weight and that, but there's boys out there, like as you mentioned, like Cash for out. I fought like Cash and that an amateur, so it's good to see them doing well and that could be that could be me in like a few years' time as well, you know what I mean? So, good. Um, so we're talking about sponsorship, and obviously, like your first fight. Yeah. Um, who was it that, that sorted you with that? Glasgow Garden Mountain. So a big thanks to them for all the, the kit and helping out with a lot of things. So Does it mean a lot, like because obviously you you need to focus on a fight, and then like there is financial pressure on a boxer. So I'm just saying that by the time the fight comes, you've already spent your wage with the training and the eating and the, the getting the medical costs. You know what I mean? It's so a lot of things in it in boxing. People just think it's gone there and fighting. There's there's hundreds of stuff to it. You know what I mean? And a lot of people always think there's more money involved. I'm I'm like listen, there's no like just starting it. You know what I mean? It's quite easy to get to a certain level. There's levels in boxing. When f somebody's just starting out, it's quite difficult for them to like make any money at the start. You know what I mean? So who was that? The sponsor? Uh, Glasgow Garden Maintenance. Big thanks to them. Uh, so we'll big them up as well for for sorting mm -hmm. them out. All right, thanks for coming up. Um, I know he's just finished the training session, <laughs> Brian dragged you here, but I um, appreciate he's coming up, um, and no doubt I'll we'll catch up with you very soon, my man. Okay, I'm now joined with Fahid Mohammed, uh, also from O'Neill's. Um, you're hoping to become pro, but we'll talk about your, well, you're in the process of becoming pro, so we're going to assume everything's good to go, um, but we'll talk about your, your amateur uh, career. Um, 
how long have you been boxing for? I know you've been boxing for nine years, but how did you start um, getting out of boxing? Uh, I was mostly from my brothers and stuff. They used to box as well, but they went so so. See, they didn't have any fights or anything. But I just started going with them, and then started really liking it, and then just started doing it myself as well, and then just got into it from there. Yeah. So the older brothers. Yeah, I've got like two older brothers. Yeah. So. Has it been tough growing up with two older brothers? I'm the oldest brother, yeah. so I know I've, I've I've made it tougher for my wee brother. Um, but what's it like being a, a younger brother and, and uh, we? Maybe I'd, I'd, I'm assuming they were into boxing and had gloves on and sparring and that and who's? Uh, I was sort of right, man. I was like, you just learn from them, to be honest. Like, go in, like, did he teach me stuff and stuff when I was younger. Uh, but, yeah, it wasn't tough, to be honest. It was all right, yeah. You're a better boxer now than your brothers? Yeah, I'd say so. They don't box anymore, but, yeah, I'd say so. So, no, you're the man of the house? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> so, um, you, you've had how many fights? Uh, about 18, 18 fights. But uh, I started boxing when I was like about 14 or so but now I'm like 23 so yeah I've been boxing for quite a few years I had like I took about two years off as well though because uh, my university and stuff so it's kind of like a lot so asked me back now and I was like instead of me boxing amateur again I'll box pro so I've just signed with Sam as well so so just signed to uh, kind of boxing uh, was it just over the lockdown yeah I was over the lockdown so I'm still in the process uh, I've turned professional right now so yeah we'll see how it goes so you've just finished uni as well uh, what were you studying? Studying construction management uh, at Glasgow Caledonian University. And now you've got a you've got a job lined up. Yeah, so I'll be moving. Uh, I'm actually moving uh, tomorrow. <laughs> moving tomorrow, so yeah, I'm moving tomorrow. So uh, it's just down in London, uh, in the outskirts of London. So uh, I'm just working for a company there, but we'll see how it goes. But like, it's going to be difficult managing like uh, boxing and work at the same time. Um, it's quite a big move to go for like Glasgow which is compared to London's tiny um, have you been in South before have you got family or anything there yeah I do have like a bit of family uh, down in England but I've been in there a few times but it's not it's like it's not like home is it so we'll see how it goes like so your plan is to you got to go down London and continue your training and maybe I jumped in there as well yeah so basically like when I go down there I'll probably find like another boxing gym and then start training there uh, but I'll, cu I'll be coming back, back and forth. So I'll have like fights lined up here and then I'll come back and fight here uh, with Brian Murphy. Uh, he'll, be, he'll be in my corner and then we'll see how it goes from there. But like, I think it should be all right. It'll be a, it's a new learning experience as well, like fighting, like sparring different boys from England and stuff. So yeah. Have you travelled with boxing before? Yeah, like with the Neils, I've travelled traveled quite a lot. I've, we've done, uh, I've had like, quite a few fights down in England as well. So I've travelled with uh, Neils quite a lot, yeah. It's nothing new for you to be having to travel for a fight. I know with my mates, like sometimes they have to travel here, there, and everywhere to get fights. Um, and the bigger they get, the more expensive the tickets and more expensive the hotels and the the travel is to to get there. But you're going to be the opposite. So you're going to be having to so maybe sometimes we come back up to say Glasgow for for fights. Yeah, like that's the plan. So like it's going to be difficult uh, and it's going to be expensive, but like it should be all right to be honest, man. You pass uni, you got a good job lined yeah. up. You could you could put your own locals in it, have your own company soon and sponsor yourself. Yeah, like I've got like a few sponsors lined up, but uh, so I'm just looking forward to it as well, man. Just getting in the ring now. So, yeah. so has it been difficult during during lockdown? We were talking to to Gary about um, when the sort of the gyms were shut and you use Kynock Gym. Um, it is a big gym. You've got a lot of pro fights. They've, they've got the, the biggest gym in Scotland. You've got um, the biggest stable in Scotland. The pro fighters. Um, is it? Does it feel good to be part of that? No, yeah, definitely. Sam, Sam Kinnock, like, he puts on shows, like, all the time, like, more than any other promoter out there. And, like, he's got, he's, like, his gym's, like, one of the biggest in uh, in the UK as well. Uh, boxing gyms in the UK. So, like, it's good to be a part of it. Yeah, be a, be a part of his team as well. So, yeah. I suppose it's, it's a good time the now because box, everything sort of stopped for so long and it's slowly coming back up. There's going to be new names, new faces that are that are getting into the ring and it's a sort of good opportunity for, for people like yourself to, to break out because a lot of boxers as well, will, like their careers would have ended during that time. Um, so th maybe we're in a, a refresh stage where we, we need to see new boxers, new faces and the boxers that have got need new challenges as well. So like you guys coming in, it's, it's, it's probably a, po a more positive thing for, for Scottish boxing. Yeah, no, definitely. Like I've been out, like like I said, like for about two years. So because of this lockdown, like if I had like more time as well to think about everything, like finish my finish my studying and stuff like that and start thinking about it and just like get into boxing slowly, slowly. So, so I'm just doing it gradually now. So I'm starting to get more fitter and fitter every time.
time I'm every time I'm training. So yeah, it's like a lot of like opportunities out there now. So yeah. Right, my man, Fad, thanks for coming to talk to us. No and good luck with the, the travel. And no doubt when the shows start back up, we'll, we'll see you. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm home to the live stream show, so maybe we'll be, that's what we'll be moving into oh, soon. Great, so, like, um, you can, if, even if you're not here, you can watch maybe online other shows that are going yeah, on. No, we'll yeah, give we'll yeah. you a free pass or something. We're going to charge you for it. All right, my man, cheers. cheers. All right, uh, my guest now is Shane Young, um, originally from O'Neill's, but now you've, you've also signed with the Kynock brand. So I was saying, uh, if I had that, as a, a big brand, there's a lot of professional boxers, but you are the new, up and coming, fresh faces. Um, do you feel that's more pressure on you, or do you think it's it's a bit easier for you? Uh, no, it's all right. By the way, you know, there's a lot of up and coming boxers, you know, and obviously good sparring, and you know, everyone brings everyone on, and it's just a lot of big team, and obviously, and it's a lot, there's a lot of good sparring. Obviously, Gary, Fahid. And obviously, Paul Tay, you know, so we're all, we're all a team. We're in so, um, we'll, we keep saying it, but just so people put things into context, so as a, a boxer that um, is, is in the gym, I mean, you've been boxing since you were eight years old, so that's 12 years of boxing. Um, no doubt you've been in the gym constantly since that age. Um, what did the, the lockdown do in terms of, like, stop you from being able to, to move forward? Uh, obviously, everyone has a, a, their tough times, you know, through obviously a lockdown and the situations. But uh, I just try to keep myself focused and obviously try to do a bit of running here and there, you know. And so you kept yourself going, not even though the, when the gyms and that was shut? Uh, I tried my best to keep myself going. You know, obviously, lockdown's kind of easing now, so kind of getting back into what I do best. So, do you have big plans for your pro career? You've done well in your, your amateurs, your um, two time Western, and you also won the, the Scottish. Um, so, you've already got like, a successful. Like amateur career, um, have you got big plans now moving up into, into the pro? You know, that's it, by the way, you know, like, uh, if Sam lines up the fights and stuff like that, you know, I've got a big future ahead of me, you know, obviously, um, I've got a good coach, Brian, and obviously, I'm looking for sponsors too, you know, so, shout out, obviously, if there's any sponsors out there, <laughs> they could sponsor me. <laughs> Aye, if there's any sponsors interested, then Gary and Shane are both sponsors. Fai, are you looking for a sponsor? You said you've already got some. Many. Four? You've got enough. Right? We'll not help Fahy do any sponsorship. Um, <laughs> so... Well, I believe I can win titles in the future, you know. Obviously, you need to progress up levels and stuff like that, right? but I've been in spamming quite a good uh, few, obviously, other people too, and obviously it's, I'm coming on. So, um, some of the names that I was speaking to, you've got Calvin McCord, Ahmed Mueva, Black Assassin, you've got Paul Murphy as well. Um, and Dean Sutherland and Paul Keane. Like these are, are guys that, that some of them are now taking the step into more like UK uh, wide fights and stuff like that. Um, but they've had, I mean, Ahmed himself, he's had 13 fights and now he's, he's sort of moving up into the like, IBO things and that. Like, do you look forward to that that progression and getting in and having as many fights as you can, like in, in big shows and stuff like that, and selling the tickets and having the crowd shout your name and stuff? You know, I don't have a problem selling tickets. That, that's not a problem, you know. And like, if I could fight the more, I would fight the more. You know, I love fighting. I've been brought up since obviously a kid. You know, and that's just what I like to do is fight. You know, so I'm looking forward to obviously seeing what happens in the pros and that. And I want to progress. I could become a champion in the future. I believe that, and I'm gonna stick to my word and just see how it goes for there. Right, my man. So thanks for for coming on and talking to us. Um, I'm going to try and get to news. Um, I'm going to we'll try and get to news with these some shots and maybe speak to some of the amateur yeah, boxers as well. Cool. And stuff like that, and obviously other boxers. Uh, for you're on your you're on your list. You know, it's, they've got them in mind. Obviously, they've been like well, well, the same as me. But you know, I need to progress up, get my debut first, and see how it goes for there. Right, my man. Thank you. Thanks for talking to me. Okay, my next guest is Jay Stewart from Jury's Boxing Club. He did miss the Jury special a few months ago. Uh, we did interview him, but we had issues with the sound, so this is to catch up um, and to say sorry for that. Um, so here he is, it's Jay Stewart from Jury's Boxing Club. Okay, my guest now is Jay from Jury's Boxing Club. Um, Jay, we'd done an interview when we'd done the Jury special, and there's a problem with the sound, so I'm sorry for that, but this is this is your second interview. Um, how does it feel being back at boxing, Jury's? 
feels like really good because I was missing it in lockdown, but like bored all the time, and I couldn't do anything. So we had to do like the Zoom classes and that. Yeah. Did you see um, away at the beginning of lockdown? Archie was doing like the live streaming, and then they put the, there was a video he put up by accident, which was and it came up gaining him all these filters, which he panicked when he seen it and then deleted it. But then he realised, you know, it was actually quite fun. So for ten minutes, like this is before he hurt his ankle. I think ten minutes before that, it was like he was he'd done ten minutes for kids, which was just all these all these filters and stuff. Um, but my question is, like, did does it feel like when you watch stuff like that, and you do you taking part in the sort of the the like like what Archie was putting out live? Were you doing the the exercises? Yeah. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, it's fun. Does it feel a bit different? Obviously, you're not in the gym. Um, a, a lot of boxers have said to me that they sort of took a step back for boxing. They weren't like pushing themselves as much because they didn't have the coach like sort of hanging at them and, and shouting. Are they so how, how did you f find it? I was just the same as them. I, like, I find it easier when I have somebody like helping me and that behind me to like make me go better, do better. Yeah, cause when I was in the gym, like I was there for a few classes, and you, I think you were there throughout. Um, but it's quite intense training. See now you're not getting to the, you don't get to the sparring or anything, but um, so there's a, a more emphasis on fitness and conditioning and things like that. Um, how are you finding that, or did you miss the sparring and and the the pad work and stuff? Miss it. I really miss it, but like nothing I can do. Just focus on what I can do. You know, with the restrictions and that. Yeah, it's one of the things people are saying. Like we don't know when like tournaments and that are going to come back. Um, but you hoped that you would be fighting in the, the novices if it, if it came about. Is that right? You don't know yet? So I know it's just everything's just up there. Um, other than that, like I've obviously I know your dad. I've known your dad since I was probably about your age, I think. <laughs> um, but he was telling me that you're, you're also into like sound and music and, and grime and that. So um, give us a wee intro on what you're, what you're into and, like, and how you get into it. I mean... I just found like a song or something and just started listening to the artist and like features and that. He was featuring, so then I kept on, then it just expanded from there. That's how I started liking it. Because I'd seen it on the charts and that, and the music, and then I wanted to get into it because, yeah. So do you make your own, own music or are you just exploring like the different music that sells just now? I do both. Like I'm starting to make my own music, like make my own beats and that, write some lyrics down, starting to do stuff like that. So there's a boxer in, a, you, you maybe have heard him, Jason McCormick for Renfrewshire Boxing. He's um, He makes his own intro. So his mum's a DJ. It's quite weird, actually. It's like the opposite for you, but his mum's a DJ. So your dad was a, a DJ in the, the radio stations, like Cast Milk, is that right? Um, but his mum's a DJ and she plays the music for the, the event. So if Renfrewshire Boxing's got a home show, she'll be the DJ. And Jason makes his own entrance music. And it's always like... Um, very dramatic, it's like wrestling, like there's like a, a wrestling entrance theme <laughs> where it keeps changing and then the crowd reacts to different parts and he's like, it's all planned and it looks good. But do you think maybe when you go into the ring, you can make your own, your own beats? That's the plan, to make my own beats and that. Your dad could be DJing at the event? Mm. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Look at that. So um, how's Archie been? Because I've, I've spoke to Shaz, mum was on the show, it was two weeks ago now, um, but he was saying that Archie was kind of getting a bit nervous. When I know I went to see him um, was during the lockdown, and we couldn't have any boxers there. Like we tried to see what we could do, but it was it wasn't going to it wasn't going to meet the restrictions. So he was he was telling me that he's got these things in place, and you sign in and the temperature check and stuff. And um, does the gym feel a bit different? And is Archie still stressing it? Feels very different. Archie still stressing. It feels really different, to, like the distance and all that. But yeah. So you hoping like when you hoping for it to get back to normal? Do you have any idea? I've no idea, but I want it as soon as possible. As soon as boxing Scotland let us in, I'm up for it. I think we like it's a bit difficult because we're moving. It's like you we move forward and then there's a rise in cases and then you you don't know. But other than that, how's how's things? You got you back at school? Yeah, back at school. How's the social distancing going on in school? It's, it's weird. <laughs> Too big the school. So do you, well that's what I mean. Like I speak to people, and it's like there's no, like there's not a lot of social distancing going on in school, and yet at boxing gyms and stuff, the, you're not even allowed contact. So I, it's it's I know it's to like people say, oh, it's to try and restrict. You can't eliminate it; you just restrict the the contact. But it, it sometimes doesn't make sense. Like I can work with somebody, 
but yet they can't come visit my house. Which, which doesn't make sense. So hopefully we're moving in the right direction. Um, you never, you've not just um, been in boxing. You you done judo as well. Five, six, seven years. You say that again because I never put the mic. So you done judo is it? for five, six, seven years or something like that. And you enjoy it? Yeah, enjoy that. Would you like best judo or box? Boxing easily. Why? Fun, more fun. What's your your plans for boxing? So do you see yourself like being on the big stage and selling out arenas and um, with me filming in the corner? <laughs> yeah, I see that. I just need to put the work in. I'll get there eventually. I mean, I've got loads of good like people to help me in that, and I can learn from. So yeah, I mean, you're 14, so you're still relatively young. Um, I think when I think about my mates, they get involved in boxing. Maybe about even 15, 16. So you still got like, even a few years ahead of them. Plus, you've been involved in other like combat sport so you've got a good background for that um, but it would be good to like for us to follow your, your story and then I look forward to like when boxing gets back and we can film your fights and stuff like that I'm hoping to have like commentary teams like at the events so it would be good like even if you joined us and come, if you want to fight and then you know somebody that was you could join us and help us with, with commentary and that but um, listen keep in touch um, and even if doing the music side I've got, we've got a few contacts in music and like if the shows and that that they've got coming up, we'll invite you and you can you can come with that. Okay, we had more sound issues after we interviewed Chloe Bodwick, so we decided to head out to AAA Academy in Edinburgh, uh, where we spoke to Chloe um, along with a whole load of other boxers and Alex Arthur, MBE himself. Braves. Braves and the Braves and the Braves. Hi right, guys, my guest now is Alex Junior from Triple A Academy out here in Edinburgh. Um, how you doing, Alex? Good, mate. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, I filmed a few. Of your, I think two of your fights. Two, aye, two. So we filmed uh, the first one was up at it was Lockie um, in Dundee, I think, which was a, a show that we took last minute. Um, what are you smiling about? Because I feel like I was shafted for that win, to be honest. To be honest, like, I remember. Ah, it's one of these things. Eh? It's amateur boxing. You win, you lose. That's. Just and then I seen you, it was, would have been in the, was it Scottish? The uh, intermediates. How did you go on then? Uh, I won. Uh, you had the semi-final and the final, I think. Yep, that's right. Uh, won the semi-final and a stoppage and then won the final unanimously. So. Have you moved up since then? Wait, because you look taller. Uh, I've grown during lockdown. Uh, just been fortunate to have the gym. Uh, like me, it's our gym, so uh, I self-isolate with my dad. So um, we've been able to keep our training up and stuff during lockdown. Which did that come in handy? For sure. Uh, aye, of course it did. Of course it did. Just feels like I've been maybe been able to stay a step ahead. The other to. side is obviously you've got your your brother boxes as well. Um, so you got you, your brother, and your dad that are constantly. Obviously, your different weights. But I have seen some of the shots that your dad was was throwing it easy, doesn't he? Hold back. You said he's struggling to keep up. Do you do you feel that? Uh, tries to. I do. I do sometimes, and I've I've sparred with him a couple of times as well. There's uh, there's something about him that makes me think there's going to be a comeback or maybe something like Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, a couple of old guys, but I don't know. I doubt it. He enjoys But you're, you're, you're bigger than your dad, isn't it? Uh, well, I'm taller, aye, yeah. but uh, we're both about well, about five, six kilos apart, I think. He's uh, he's getting weir as he gets older. <laughs> so, um, boxing has obviously been a big part of your life since uh, you were young. I speak to um, Willie Lemon's sons, uh, Jake and Drew, they're through at Rob Roy. I speak to them last, uh, two weeks ago. And I asked him, is there a lot of pressure or added pressure because people know who your dad is? Is that like, do people think, oh, that's his son, I need to like up my game or whatever? Or? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I Sometimes when you fight, there's a, it feels like there's a wee bit of pressure on your shoulders, but it's been like that for a long time now. I'm used to it. It's just one of these things. So, so the, that's the first time I've been to the, the gym. I've been promising, like, we've been, we talk a lot, to be honest. Um, and I was planning coming out, and then Chloe came into the, the office last week, and I thought, do you know what, let's let's head out. Um, but as you said, you you are lucky enough to maybe get access to the gym. Um, have you felt for other boxers that maybe didn't? You? I, I, it's, it's gotten, it's, it's uh, especially like boys that are maybe in between like 15 and 20. It's like, it's like almost like a prime time. Like, I'm 18 years old. I was expecting to have a big, busy season and rack up all the experience, especially with transferring from junior to senior. I was uh, I was lucky to get the intermediates because um, 
I wouldn't have fought uh, any senior fights if it wasn't for the intermediates. So yeah, there's a lot of people to be in that position where maybe some people haven't had any fights this year. Um, but you hopeful that maybe I mean it's, it's difficult to say, but you hopeful that maybe tournaments will at least start soon um, or regional tournaments and you can get back into um, boxing competitive. Definitely. Well, the, we've got a couple of boxers in here that we're going to compete in the novices at the end of October. But with the new rules and stuff that's just came out, I mean, if you if you didn't reopen your gym before the before Monday, you're not allowed to reopen it and all that stuff. It's uh, Do you think it's been fair on gyms or is it no. tough? I don't think pubs should have been opened before gyms. Have you seen, we have these conversations where it's like even some of the younger box I'm talking to, they're going to school and there's very little social distancing and I mean everybody can pretend it is but you're in a school and then you can't like come into a gym and Aye, I know, I see. Aye, like, uh, we don't stay far away from our school and you walk past all the time, you see them all running about the playgrounds and it's like there's not much social distancing going on, I mean, like let's be serious eh? So uh, one thing we're we're talking about is maybe if there is a possibility for like home shows to at least start, uh, even if it's with an audience, then we can maybe look at helping like film it or stream it to at least get things uh, started. Is that something that you, you think you'd, because I know when I seen you in Lockheed, like, there was a buzz about you coming in and you came in with your, your dad in your corner as well and everybody's like, like and so is it, do you find, do you think it would be easier in a, like the no fighting in front of a crowd or do you think you get excitement for the crowd? I mean, of course, you get excitement for the crowd and stuff, and there's nothing better than perform like people seeing like people coming out to watch you, and it's like. But I box because uh, I want to go places, and I feel like this is holding me back from doing that. So whether there's an audience or whether there's no audience, I'm not that bothered now. It's just it's like almost like a be almost be like a competitive spa. You've got your coaches, and you maybe got an official or something, you know, like making sure everything's all right. And I think it would be great to organised competitive sparring within clubs where you have to make weight for and stuff as well um, just to remind yourself that it's not just a come in and fight and then leave you have to like train for it for weeks you have to like sacrifice maybe going out and stuff like that so I definitely think boxers Is that easy at your age to, to sacrifice a lot? I mean any successful boxer even you asked like your, your dad or, or, or the boxers that you know that they've, they've had to sacrifice a lot of that um, for boxing, because at the end of the day, like you can tell just by looking, you're an athlete. It's not like um, in some of these these choices that other young people make. You you can't you have to stay away from them. Um, so do you feel that with like maybe your friends or whatever? Or uh, I totally. Um, another thing my dad's always told me is he when he uh, when he was young he had no life at all, and uh, that's something uh, because he wanted to be a world champion as a professional. Uh, I box because I like to box. I've got no intentions of turning professional at all. I want to stay. You don't have any intention? No intention at all. Uh, I've had interviews with Andrew McCart and he's been pushing me as well. I'd be like, oh, what? if you go to the Olympics, what happens after you leave? You get offering contracts and that is. I've got no intention of turning professional at all. Uh, Do you say that and then maybe you think that you you think differently down the line, or is it like, no, it's no happening? No, nah, it's. Uh, Guaranteed, no, I'm, I'll never turn professional. Uh, my goal since I've been young is to compete in the Olympics. Uh, I've, I said when I was like 10, I want to compete in the Olympics. Uh, and at, back then, it wasn't even in boxing. I just said I want to be at the Olympics. Like, it just looks class. Uh, and then 16, had my first fight, and I was like, yeah, I think this is what I want to do. So I, uh, Olympics, and then, and then I'll never box again. How sure are you with that? Positive. So if I come back, say 10, 12, 15 years time, the money's right. Uh, nah, I won't turn professional. I've got a, uh, I want to help my dad when he's older uh, run the gyms, and uh, that's the goal. So that's quite interesting for you. Like, I used to be in, I was in the youth parliament, and I used to constantly get asked, "Oh, so that be like going into politics?" And I, I wasn't interested in that type of politics at all. And they'd never believe me, but I've never been interested. It was a man like I like community politics and stuff like that. So you for the like boxing and the actual for the love of the sport rather than um, the but big. The thing is, is that I seen it all first hand. I didn't like any of it. Seeing my dad all cut up and like making weight and stuff for fights, and I never liked it. So he says to me, is that when I box my dad, he's like, yeah, he doesn't want me to go pro. Obviously, Macklin's got every intention of turning pro, and that's where the focus is. I want to box as long as I can as an amateur. And then when I stop enjoying it, that's when I'll stop fighting. So are you ever involved in any of the coaching for? Like, uh, maybe I, I also do the PTs uh, in the gym as well. I've got a, a small client base that uh, I can work around my own training in. 
um, just m means I don't have to go out and get a job and like focus on working and making money and training. And I think stuff. that's important that if you've got a, a job that's based in a gym and oh. like also you're, you're encouraging other people to take their first steps yeah. and especially like after lockdown there's, there might be some people that have not stepped foot in a gym and they can come and somebody who knows the gym as you said you've, you've, you've seen it all even you get the experience as well that's been passed on for your dad that you know the gym as well and you can like help somebody like better themselves. Uh, I definitely. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot from my dad and uh, I can pass it on to a lot of people uh, coming up and that's why another thing I want to do, I want to box an amateur for a long time and gain experience because I believe you, the best coaching comes from experience. I don't believe in like doing a course and then you, you can go and coach. I think it, the more you do, the more you learn, the more you see in a career, you can then pass on first hand. It's, I think that's experience is invaluable and that's, what, that's how I see it. Okay, my guest now is Coley Bodwick. This is uh, round three for us. This is the third time we've, we've done an interview. Uh, but this time we're in Triple A Academy in Edinburgh, which is uh, the gym that you train for. You come through three times a week? I come through th three times a week, my mum. So we said last time how much uh, support your mum's been and brings you through. And she's I know she's hiding in the corner, but she is here. Um, does, does that mean a lot for you to, to sort of, when you're aiming for for goals and, and stuff like that, to have somebody that's, that's that close that's going to bring you through and, and support you? Yeah, my mum supported me um, right for, for the start, so I wouldn't be here without her, so yeah. So we spoke before about um, how the gyms were closed during the lockdown, you weren't able to, to train as much, but you took advantage of some of the, the Zoom classes and stuff. Did you do them? Yeah. Um, well, the national team, um, they gave out all the international boxers that I plan to follow, and plus I was doing Zoom calls with Neil Clark for Boxing Scotland and the um, Boxing Scotland live sessions along with the stuff my club coaches were giving me to do, so I was still keeping active. So I know Boxing Scotland were quite tough on people, like checking up on them yeah. and stuff. Did you did you feel like they were sort of making sure you were, you were doing what you were supposed to do? Yeah, they were making sure we were running, we were tracking us on Strava. Um, making sure we were still keeping up to date with boxing, our technical work and everything. But they've done a really good job over lockdown to keep us going. So do you have any indication of when um, like tournaments and that might start? Or do you think it would be different from um, maybe regional ones to um, maybe club shows? Or do you think Boxing Scotland will have maybe tournaments first? Because they've started, I think they're starting soon in Ireland. But do you have, have you heard anything yet or are you still need to wait and see? I've not really heard it yet, but I'm just going to. I'm just glad to be back training. Just keep training for when the fights do start back. So I've seen you doing. Um, you're doing some more like sort of strength conditioning for stuff and some stretching and stuff like that. Um, is the training been a bit different because you can't do like the pad work and the, the sparring? Yeah, it's been really different, but we're just trying to keep the fittest we can. So when it's the season starts back, we're just good to go. Does the gym feel different with the like restrictions? I know everybody's like social distancing and stuff. Um, does it? Do you feel that like you have to sort of make sure you're constantly washing your hands or signing in or temperatures and stuff? Like that? Um, it does. It feels different, but I think we're all just glad to be back part as a team again. Are you just glad just to to like you get your feet back in the door and, and go for it. Ah, it's good. It's good to get back. And how's school being? Because I know um, the last time we spoke, it was um, for our JTV. Raw series last year or earlier this year, was you you used to you would get up bright and early for boxing, but your mum said it was a bit of a struggle to get you up for school. Um, is that still the case, or you've been back at school and you're you're you got to go? Aye, that sounds like me, but I've been going every day, so I've been doing good. Um, has the school been supportive of your your boxing? Because I know that, that like think they let you away early and stuff to, to catch the training come through. Yeah, they've been letting me away um, half an hour early and stuff just so I can catch the train through the training. So they've been quite good that way. So, yeah. And with homework and that, you're managing to juggle both your training and your homework, or do you do that in the train home? Um, well, I do it on the nights that I'm not through here, so I can just have three nights to train. And what's your your friends been like? Are they being supportive of your boxing, or is it? Did you not tell them? Is it you that never told them? No, I tell my pal. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> I, they're really supportive. Um, they respect it and everything, so it's quite good to have their support as well. Brilliant. So, Chloe, thanks. We're round three. It's our third round talking. Um, and as I say, everyone, as soon as the boxing, the, the tournaments and that start, we'll be back out and hopefully we can start filming shows and filming your fight. Cheers, pal. Brains. 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 My guess is Macklin Arthur, still at the AAA Academy in Edinburgh. Macklin, how are you doing? Oh, good, how are you? 
I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, I've not very much to eat today, so I had to grab a McDonald's. I'm ashamed to say on the way out. Um, I seen you, you. You're doing some pad work with your dad. Um, you're in a lucky position because the two of you live in the same household. You're, you're able to do that. Um, so you've, as your brother said, you were able to use the jam. You could continue, um, but your dad wasn't that easy on you. It was quite tough shots. Always, always. Uh, Is he always pushing you to your limit? Of course, yeah. So you the same all my life. I don't. It's not a shock to me. So you're quite. I've been uh, before I when I was sort of just getting into filming boxing. Like your name was thrown up a few times as, as somebody that um, people already are aware of. You, they're already watching you. Um, have you grown up at all during the lockdown? Of course, I have. Because like, I seen, I remember seeing you. I think it was earlier in the year, and you just for quarantine. I think I was forty-six kilo. Now I'm sitting at forty-two. Soft. A bit, yeah. But I'm definitely going out. So, um, your, as we were saying, your dad doesn't make it easy on you, the shots. Is that, is that what's sort of got you to this stage? Where you're, or do you think as well you've had that ambition and that passion yourself? Well, it separates me from everyone else. I work a lot harder in here and he pushes me past my limits and all that. It's very, very good. So I was speaking to your brother, he said he, he doesn't know, but um, when I was speaking to, to Willie Lemons, uh, two, two boys, they was, I was asking him if sometimes there's an added pressure because people think, like with you, would it be, oh, that's Alex Arthur's son, like he's got, he's like. Got to be good. He's always got to be good, yeah. Does that make. Do you need to be constantly focusing on your game or. I'm always focused. It's, it's not really a problem for me. There's not much else that's in my life that I care about more than boxing. It's always on my mind 24 7. And do you, I was speaking to you about the, the sacrifices some other people need, like some people don't need to make, but you need to make. Um, so how old are you? I am 13. So you're 13 years old. <laughs> uh, 13 years old. Um, I mean, my nephews are 13 and they're constantly playing PlayStation and going out with their pals. Definitely. I've got to miss out on a lot of things, but again, it's boxing. It's on my mind 24-7. Nothing really can change that for me. So I know that you've got big plans in boxing. Um, I mean, you see there's pictures running your your dad with, with his belts. Um, do you see your own forties up there one day? With yeah, yeah, I see it. Perfect. So what's your 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 absolute dream? I'd love to become the world champion. I've not got a doubt in my mind that it won't happen. Definitely think I'll get to that level. And you have like, obviously like your brother's boxer boxer is a big yeah. a big part of your not just your life but your family's life. Have someone there that's that's like that. And you've got your dad who's who's seen it all and done it all. And he's he's got that guidance. And plus, with the coaching, like I suppose you've got an added advantage as well because you've got that connection with your dad. But does it, is it do you have to separate being the father and son and the the boxer and the? Coach? Some, sometimes me and my dad will. Uh, well, of course, we'll be doing the pads, but me and my brother Alec, we can do pads too. So it works well that we've got that triplet that we can all work, all work together and come to the gym every day and get everything done with each other. Does it ever get a bit competitive between you? Nah, never. Sometimes at home and all of that, but nah, never in the gym. I think we just go our own ways and do everything ourselves. So when I was speaking to, to Drew I mean, he was like, oh, I know I'm going to be better than my dad. <laughs> right, but <laughs> your, dad, your dad's got quite big boots to fill. I know it's... <laughs> nah, yeah, I'll definitely be better. Than <laughs> <laughs> You've definitely got the the passion and the, the confidence. Um, so, what do you you hope to happen next? Like in the, the next few months, you, do you hope that maybe the tournaments will start back up? I think. Well, I'm just focusing on my next fight. I think I'll be going in to Ireland in November. That that's it's not uh, not 100 percent, but I think it could be happening. And then I'll have all the Scottish tournaments next year and all that if they go ahead. So that's all I'm really focusing on. Right so are you looking forward to travelling a lot with boxing? There's a lot of boxers that have travelled. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a perfect feature for being an amateur boxer, getting to travel the world and all that. Something that most other teenagers and all that my age wouldn't get to do. I suppose like I've seen you um, with my mate Cash was fighting, like you, you know, at some of the, the shows as well. So, you, I mean, you get to go and, sp like, uh -huh. you know these, these people by f in first name terms. And th is it good to be sort of... But it was the word like you, you know these guys and you can like they might be in a, a position where they will look up to you one day. Of course, yeah. I talk to all the young boxers and all that when I get the chance and when you do go to these events, all the Scottish boxers that you see in the tournaments and they're always there. So I yeah, I can I get along with all of them.
Okay, my guest now is Anna Vincente from AAA Academy. Anna, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are yourself? I'm alright, man. I'm alright. Um, so we've never, I've never met you before, yep. um, but we're just talking there. Like, you used to be a skier. Yeah, I used to ski for Team GB and then retired like two years ago due to injuries and stuff. So, so like, I used to uh, ski. I know a lot of people don't believe that, but I used to ski like, when I was younger at school, um, and I loved it. But going from skiing to boxing is a massive, massive uh, difference. But I suppose if you're an athlete, there's maybe things. Is there anything from skiing that you've taken to boxing? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like I've gone through a lot of rehabs and stuff, done my ACL twice, I've ruptured my AC joint in my shoulder. So I've been through a lot of rehabs, and obviously like through those rehabs I've been in the gym, so I've got a lot of strength, a lot of power. So I'm basically just learning a skill now. I've got the whole athletic kind of... Um, build behind me so yeah I feel I've got an advantage kind of over the girls over that. So, so you came into um, boxing through rehab you never you, you didn't have any plans to, to box like um, but now you've you've had uh, two amateur fights in your exhibition how did how did they go? Yeah my first two amateur fights were second um, second round knockouts and then the a exhibition actually got kind of cut short because I was a bit too aggressive for the girl but yeah I've absolutely loved it and Alex is an amazing coach so yeah I'm so grateful to, to be part of his academy as well. So um, you'll be home to, to continue in the, the sort of when the tournaments uh, kick back off. Um, has it been frustrating like maybe not having full access to the gym or have you found other ways to I mean you're from a from skiing I suppose you can train as well on your, your own you're quite you've got that mindset but was it is it difficult maybe not having a gym at uh, disposal during the lockdown? Yeah definitely I was actually using uh, car tyres for uh, weights and stuff <laughs> just anything that I could find but yeah it was gotten because I was entered into the Scottish just before this so I was pretty excited I would probably be my what well, would have been my fourth or fifth fight so it would have been interesting to see how it went but uh, yeah so it was hard but yeah I've been training I'm really hard throughout this, and I'm pretty, I'm feeling ready to go as soon as we can we can box. So yeah. is there a hope that that comes soon? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, like it's been quite nice to, um, I guess, have some time to like work on my skill a bit more because I've just I've just started like in November, so I'm pretty fresh. So it's been quite nice to like like obviously these guys have been giving me skills to do, and I've been working on that. So it's been a bit nice to have a bit of time and hopefully catch up with the other girls, and then yeah, hopefully we'll be flying from. So what was your your first? Um, boxing fight like when you go on did you, did you have nerves or did you, how, did you explain that ex experience yeah it was to be honest it was the the fear of the unknown I didn't know what to expect but I just as soon as I got in there and obviously it was just me and the other girl I was like it's me or you and it's it's always going to be them it's never going to be me and I think being a skier as well I've been through so many injuries I'm so mentally strong so yeah and it's quite weird but I like getting hit so I'm not scared at all <laughs> <laughs> You're in a good sport then. Um, how's it? Has it been in the, the gym since you've been back? I know there's um, there's no like sparring or, or pad work going on. Um, and it's more like like strength, conditioning, and, and the bags and things like that. So have you if you, you noticed a difference in like your focus on on some like other parts um, rather than like the actual aggressive fighting side? Yeah, definitely. Like I guess the skill um, is definitely like obviously the technique. I'm learning a lot more, and I've got time now to like really dial in all the technique and stuff so yeah I guess that's kind of I guess it's helped on that sense it was like, like, Obviously um, I was talking to our first sons there um, and we're saying how sometimes they have to split being a boxer and um, father and son and things like that but um, I can see that it's quite a, a, a close gym um, so, so what's it like your relationship with the, the coaches in the gym? Yeah, me and Alex, actually, the first time we ever met, we went for coffee. I was actually on crutches when I first met him, and we sat for two or three hours, I think, chatting. It was like I'd known him my whole life. So, yeah, he's actually one of my best mates, and I'm so grateful. And Paddy's absolutely amazing as well. He's so supportive. I feel like he's my number one fan. So to have those two in my corner, especially when I'm fighting, is it's just amazing. Is it an added benefit to have someone that you're, you're that close to? Because obviously, when you're in the ring, they care about you as well. It's not just, um, there's a lot of, boxing coaches that maybe you get so many people to train that there's, there's no that connection with every boxer yeah definitely it's quite a small club obviously um so yeah having obviously having alex in my corner and knowing like our fr our friendship and obviously paddy as well like i've got that behind me as well and uh obviously alex has been a world champ he knows his stuff so that obviously that behind you as well just gives you that extra wee bit of, of comfort going into a fight so it's amazing. anna thanks so much for talking to me Okay, my guest now is uh, Saul Store. Um, so I've filmed you fight. 
Uh, aye, yeah, the intermediate so, side. So, yeah. um, how did you go on then? I uh, won gold, aye. It was good, aye. What's that, that feel like? Uh, it's unbelievable, aye. It's the best feeling. I think as well, you, like, because I went through a tournament, there was some delays and stuff. There was, um, did you, because I think they delayed it and then you said to come back another aye, weekend of fight. I think I was delayed one week, aye. It was a bit nippy, but. So, um, so what did it f feel like when eventually you go through all that and then you, you're the best in Scotland? Uh, it's a bit surreal, but uh, just just shows you what happens when you work hard. Uh. Did you you f did you go into that tournament thinking, oh, that's what's going to happen, or did you think, oh, I'm going to have to work for this? So what was it like? Uh, I'm I'm always visualising winning. Uh, I don't really see losing as, as an option. So yeah, I, I just see I think a few years I like that in this gym. Aye, we're all like that. Aye. Um, so when did you you first start boxing? Uh, it was about a year and a half ago. Aye. So you boxed in a year and a half. Um, you're already the Scottish champion. Um, what's next? Well, hopefully the Open Scottish. I was meant to be fighting in that, but obviously for COVID, never managed to fight. But aye. has it been frustrating during the, the lockdown? Maybe no having full access to the gym. I well, I set up a bag in my house and that, and I managed to managed to still train quite hard in my house, but. And I live near a lot of hills and stuff, so I managed to do a good bit of running. Oh, my mate likes the uh, hill walking and stuff, that's his, so he's in there. Um, <laughs> maybe you come through Edinburgh, like, we have a drone in it, he's, we fly the drones, so he's always looking for places to go fly the drone. Uh, Edinburgh's good for hill running, like. Uh -huh. um, so the gyms are back up, they've only been open for a few weeks. Um, there are some restrictions on, like, say, pad walk and, and stuff like that, but um, are you enjoying it now being back in the gym that you can sort of focus on getting everything sort of back to a routine? Aye, it's much better, even, like, seeing the coaches. Like, you can't really do much in the house and when you've got the gym and you can see your coaches, it's just ten times better. So what's your, your long-term ambition for boxing? Do you see yourself as a, a boxing, like for your career or you ought to just take it step by step or, or what would you what would you see happening? A career is the only thing I can really see and then a later career with still with boxing, hopefully coaching or something like that but I don't really see anything else in boxing. And is it good to have um, somebody like Alex um, in the gym that has been through all that before um, and that can sort of maybe help guide and, and give you advice on, on what to, steps to take next? I well, he's probably the best coach in Scotland. So, and he's been there. He's done everything in the pros and the amateurs. So, it's really good having a coach who can actually relate that much. Yeah, it's quite approachable as well. Like he gave me out of trouble once. I've not said this, but he knows um, when Cash was fighting, and then afterwards he got an interview with Lee, and I was getting a bit excited. I got was drunk. I got excited. Did he turn and <laughs> was like, "I'll oh, be quiet." Um, but he's a very approachable guy. So is it is it like I know a lot of coaches are like this where um a lot because you're spending so much time with them, they sort of see what you're like as a person and if there's any like issues that you're worried about, like it's somebody that you can approach. Is that do you get that feeling with, with Alex and, and the other coaches in the gym? Yeah, uh, well Alex is probably like like a big brother or like a, another dad figure, so it's so easy to approach Alex. Uh. <laughs> Okay, I'm now joined with uh, Jacob. Jacob, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm all right, man. So, the last time I seen you was at the Scottish National yeah, yeah. Champions. Um, you competed then? Yeah, 91. Uh, how were you? No, oh, it was good. It was good. good. Good experience. Sadly, lost in the first round, but just need a couple more fights to get, to get into my rhythm. So, um, a lot of boxers say to me, like, they, they go into fights and even if it's a loss... Mm -hmm. It's still an experience, and it's still something they, they can build on. Um, you were quite supportive for other people, though. I, I met yeah, you as well when you were watching. Um, so, do you feel like there's a, there's a whole team of you that go and you're quite a, a tight oh, team of support? Brilliant team, it's like a family. Yeah, yeah, we all spar together. Everyone supports each other. Everyone trains together. Even through training, when we're doing like strength and conditioning, you get cheered on by your by your teammates. And then when you're sparring, you get like really good feedback from everyone. It always feels like a learning experience. And when we go out to to fight, it's just a brilliant, brilliant atmosphere. So you're originally from London, um, so you moved up to Edinburgh when? Like seven years ago. Seven years yeah, ago? Yeah, I came here for university, then ended up staying afterwards. Oh, well, that's a good story. <laughs> yeah. like, I've got mates who went to Glasgow to Dundee and they've never came back. I don't actually know what happened to them, <laughs> other than they just went to uni. Um, so was, 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 did you ever box before in London? No, I did taekwondo for three years actually, from like 15 to 18. 
So I did my different martial arts as well, a bit of grappling, but mainly my background was Taekwondo. Do you know that's weird because see my aunt, she was then the first ever sanctioned boxing women's fight yeah. in Scotland. But she used to teach Taekwondo. Oh. And now she teaches MMA in California. So she's like for that background. I remember when we were younger she used to like fight with us and stuff at, at parties and that. So what did you bring from Taekwondo to boxing? Because it's it's quite a lot of people think oh it's a combat sport, but there's different yeah, stances yeah. of fighting. It's quite it's quite different, like um, the style I did was the Olympic Taekwondo, and that's more point based. And you don't use your hands; you don't use your hands as much. Like um, the ITF Taekwondo, it's more so like you put the gloves on, you get your hands involved and in everything. So what was different was obviously getting more more active with the hands, but it helps with, uh, with stances. And also you're used to you're more used to sparring. So in terms of like temperance, you're used to actually going in there having a partner. It's not so foreign, you know. But then the competition atmosphere is completely different, completely different because because it's it's, it's more. I would say it's a lot more intense. A lot more intense, but things do transfer on there. But what's different is in Taekwondo, like you're more, you're more used to switching stances. So when I start, and you're more used to being on your toes. So one thing that you find when transferring over is having to set into things like body punches, get your feet settled. That that's something that takes a bit of time because you're so used to being on your toes when you're on the Olympic Taekwondo. But in boxing, you have to get used to being on your toes sometimes, setting on other times. So what's hard is like finding your style more so because your background is in something so different and you're most, most used to sh um, switching stances. But then now like I'm an orthodox fighter. So I have to get used to being in one stance and get used to setting my feet. So. You, you get into a rhythm, but it takes a bit more just to get there. In terms of competing as well, like um, in Taekwondo, it's like boxing, obviously you get the rounds and stuff. Taekwondo, how's the setup? You get rounds as well, yeah. You get rounds as well, but however, it's like... Um, yeah, I think in some certain cases you can. I remember in WTF, you definitely can, yeah. It depends if your opponent can't continue. But since it's more so point-based because of like the, the hogo, like the armor you wear, usually you just continue on and on and on. It's, it's, it's rare to find knockouts in WTF, in Olympic Taekwondo. But in ITF, yeah, you get knocked out because punches and stuff like that. Um, and in boxing, like, you you competed was it earlier this year? Yeah, it was uh, end of last year. End of end last year. Yeah, it was, uh, that's right. Um, so you're hoping that the tournaments uh, start back so you can go I'm back? I'm really, really hoping for that because I'm really looking forward to getting experience because for me, I started later and then also like coming from Taekwondo, I need a lot more experience. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the tournaments coming on because things like home shows and everything are really good. But the thing is the experience is really at the tournaments, making weight, coming in, the big atmosphere, having everyone there. It's just, it's just amazing. It's amazing. I love it. Like the national tournaments more than anything. You know, when you're in here, like you're getting such a great camp atmosphere different different um, inspiring partners people coming from different clubs going to different clubs and then when you go there it's just just that intense competitive atmosphere is brilliant you know and obviously for myself my, my goal is to to win and get a gold medal so obviously I want to get more experience to get there so I'm so what's your long-term goals long, 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 long term goals is to go as far as I can to go as far as I can I would love to compete internationally I'd love to compete at the highest level the possible in worlds Commonwealth Olympics possibly like for me it's just dependent on how much I get out of my experience but that's why I'm training so hard like training relentlessly and I have great sparring partners and it's always brilliant for my teammates like Alec and everyone to get a lot better because it means that they bring their experience into sparring with me you know so like looking to go as far as I can and how is it uh, juggling boxing with the rest of your life it's, it's fine, it's fine at the moment, like working's a lot more flexible luckily, luckily for me, like work, work, freelancing and stuff like that, so it's a lot more flexible for me, and then, and then when I started at the end of university, I could fit in, I'm used to like doing both studying and, and, and being a student athlete, and I'm used to like working and training as well, so that, that wasn't too hard. There's a few other people that I like, obviously, like you got, I was speaking to Chloe Bodwick and um, she's studying in school, she gets away early to come, come through here, so um, I suppose if you've got the determination, then there's, there's nothing really... Do you it's a good jump to be in for to have that passion and determination? Brilliant, it's brilliant. It's like your desire is rewarded. One thing like in this gym is that your desire is rewarded because like everyone just wants to see that you're willing to put in the work. Alex and Paddy, amazing coaches, OB being our strength and conditioning coach, all they want to see is that you want to you're willing to put in the work, you're willing to grind it through, and you're willing to like take the hits to give some back and just understand that the process is difficult. Some nights will be better than others. Some nights will be like like really difficult and like you're saying like balancing things out. Some days will, will drag on. What's really hard I'll say is the dieting. Like you know when you have stuff to do like you have to use your brain for day to day. What's Honestly, like the hardest part is like like you're used to like having like sweets and stuff at a desk, but when you're dieting, you can't. <laughs> so it's like you have to have maybe something healthier, you know, like some some fruits or something, and you really want that hit of sugar. Another hard part that most people don't understand is like we usually comfort eat a lot. I love I love my sweets, but the problem is when you're making weight and you're, you've had a hard sparring session, you're tempted to have a, like a tub of Hagen does, but then you can't because you have to diet. So that discipline is necessary, but 
really and truly, if you have the desire, like, you're, like you just mentioned, then you, you'll get there, you know. Ciao, tutto a posto? Tutto bene, grazie. Come ti chiami? Fabrizio Di Battista. Fabrizio. Va bene, buonasera. Buonasera a te, caro. Come Dove stai? abiti in Italia? Eh, Roma, vengo da Roma. <ride> Well, the rest of you English, because he's better English, I'm not Italian. Um, so, Fabrizio, I filmed you, um, it was in the, the Scottish. The Scottish Champions. How'd you go on? Uh, well, that championship, I lost in the semifinals. Um, I went ahead in the quarterfinals, I was quite right, but I was coming out of um, an injury, and I didn't do any sparring since then. So, I went inside the championship, and, and I, do, I didn't do very well in the semifinals. So, have you learned from that experience, though? Yeah, I've learned that I should train more before to go into a national championship. Which is why you're here, I suppose. Uh, correct, correct. Um, but I'm sure, I've, I've, should I see you at a club, one of the club shows? Yeah, probably in the Duties, Duties Club. Uh, I guess a good guy. Uh, that was a good fight of mine. Uh, I fought very well then. Um, I won that fight, actually. Uh, but very good guy, uh, very challenging fight. Uh, but I got the best over there and got the fight. So, for a fight like that, like, how does it come about? Do you get... Did your, your coach arrange it and then you have to travel through to, through Glasgow? Or how, how do these fights come about the home shows? Uh, yeah, our coaches really look after us. Um, what we do, we organise weeks before, you know, we get everything sorted out. And basically they come, they pick us up and we go through Glasgow. And then for that night we stayed over there and then basically we fought. We had some food afterward and we came back and, you know, the coaches do a big, big part in there. Really help us through the time there. So do you get an idea of who you're fighting before you go or do you find it very close or on the day or whatever? Um, I tend not to know. Uh, sometimes, you know, there is some register of amateur boxers where you can find some some information about them, how many fights they have, if they have many wins and, you know, their stats. Uh, but sometimes you just go and roll with the punches, as we say, you know. So, yeah. So what did you do during the lockdown? Did you have a chance to go back uh, to Rome? Yeah, what I did is basically... I went in Forlo from my job, um, spent some time here in Edinburgh, and as soon as the situation was going better in Italy, I went and flew over there. I spent two and a half months over there in the, during the summer. I did a summer camp in my former boxing club over there, very good boxing club. I can say hi to my coach, Andrea Fontaloni, actually, sure, uh, very good guy, good. yeah, for sure. I uh, can't thank him enough. So I did a summer camp over there, two months, and then as soon as I could, I came back over here at the start of August. Uh, I brought my dad with me. Uh, and I'm getting ready with Treble A here. You got an amazing team over here, very supporting all the coaches, an amazing environment with all the guys, and really looking forward for the start of the season. So, is that one thing you're eager for, is for the, the season to start and just to get straight back into it in the tournament? Uh, yeah, as soon as I can, honestly. My first, my first uh, I would say, goal would be the intermediate championship again. I want to get ready for that, avoiding injuries, because uh, last year during November I got this uh, wee injury, I couldn't get over and, um, in time for the nationals. This year I want to arrive there nice and ready without injury and, and get and get the medal this year. Yeah. So the, the gyms have just recently started on them? As you said, you had your, your training camp in, in Italy, yeah. which would have been hot, no? Oh, it was terrific over there. Like, uh, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop my heart beating so hard because it was like 35 degrees and with humidity it was like even worse. And we couldn't keep it up really, but that brought my fitness and my fitness higher and higher. So now I can keep up like some very long rounds and... I really appreciate the work that I did over there because, like, was you know, um, it really got me fit for the season coming for sure. How did you manage with food in Italy? Because I mean, like, I've just I've no, I've been back now two months. It feels like I've just came back, but like the food is just I miss it even now thinking about it. But if you're in Italy and you're at a training camp and you've got family that are going to be making all sorts. Correct. Um, I was trying. I was trying to keep myself into the, you know, into my into my diet. But to be honest, you know, the food there is far too good. And you know, I go to my grannies. I go, you know, a couple of aunties over there as well. As soon as you go there, they can make, you know, homemade pizza, pasta. You know, we would cook together. So yeah, I actually got a couple of kilos and I brought them back with me over here in Edinburgh. And I'm reading off of them. It was really hard. It was really hard, but also enjoyable. Yeah, it must, it must have felt good to get, especially just after everything that's happened with coronavirus and like, I think north of Italy was more affected. Um, the, the area, Lazio, you would have been from the same region that my family's from. Um, relatively less numbers than, than Milan, but 
Um, obviously, Lombardi up north was like 16,000 people, whereas uh, Lats was like less than a 1,000. Um, but there was restrictions. I mean, th- did you get a chance to go? Because they would have started easing, I think, maybe by the summer. Yeah, so I went back as soon as the restriction went to go a little lower. So they got, they went into the third phase. So all the bars and restaurants start to reopen. And at, start, at the start of July, also the gym reopened. And, you know, there was a very nice feeling among uh, the population because everyone wanted to share some good time with each other. I've actually seen many, many friends of, you know, that I didn't see for a long time. And we all wanted to share some good time together after the long stress of the lockdown. And, you know, and it was really, really good time over there. Lots of love in between, you know, between the people. And we share some very, very good time, I have to say. But the restrictions were enact. You know, in my boxing club, for example, in Frontaloni Boxing Club, uh, we would have just two square meters of uh, training space and we only stick over there. We we'll never move from there. Whatever we would be doing, you know, either the, either the bags or either a circuit or whatever we would be doing, just like... Um, Singular, you know, single training, um, and then you know, the more we went ahead towards uh, August, the less the restriction went going. You know, every two weeks, less restriction, less restrictions. So it started easing up more and more and more. Right, my man. So as soon as the, the tournament starts, as soon as the, the home shows start, no doubt we'll be banging into each other. Um, I can't wait to see you fight again. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we go? Um, well, uh, I can only say that I'm really looking forward to restart the season. I want to thank you for coming along and giving me the chance to speak in front of the camera and to the guys. And I want to thank my team. Uh, I can't thank them enough. An amazing environment. You know, Alex Arthur and all the other guys here we support each other so much. And we, everyone is really looking forward to, to fight for this new season. I want to thank as well the other coach, uh, Paddy. Paddy Jumel and also Obi over here, they really all, always help us with the strength and conditioning. And um, just gonna say hi to my mom, ciao mama, ciao papa, and everyone else. And that's it. Grazie. Grazie a te. Grazie. My final guest now is Alex Arthur, still at AAA. Um, how you doing, Alex? Not bad. Uh, MBE. That's uh, <laughs> <Alex Arthur>, MBE. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm from Drum Chapel, we don't have letters like that. We've, <laughs> we never hear the, the uh, letters. letters, but we'll not talk about what they are. Um, so, that's the first time I came through your gym. Was you, your, your son, Alex Jr., that we've been talking a lot, like in Instagram and stuff, and invited us out. We spoke to Chloe last week and thought maybe it's best we just come and have a, a good chat. <laughs> with everybody. Come and I. I um, so, how's it, how's it been for you during lockdown? Well, I mean, obviously, my household's me, Alec, and Macklin. So, um, I, we've never really stopped training. Of course, we've we've kept training throughout. Um, not been ideal for me um, because I've been chief span partner as well. So I've had to suffer a couple of beatings throughout lockdown. So I've had to make sure that I've kept up my in training as well, just so I can like keep up with them basically. But uh, it's been good. We've made the most of it, and obviously having a gym in the city centre has got us out of the house as well. And you know, there's a local Scott mid open. We've sometimes spent the whole day here. So we'd come and we'd maybe lift weights in the morning and then we'd watch Netflix shows on our telly and then we'd nip it and get our lunch and then we'd come back and do our boxing. So aye, it's been a it's been a real blessing, I. So I've speak to a lot of boxers that say the gym's like their, their comfort zone. Um you not just you but your your sons as well, aye. like growing up um, in a gym. So does it all as you say, does it feel good to come out from the house and get something today? And do you feel for people that maybe never never had oh, that? Aye, it must have been awful. It really must have been awful. And you know, you've got to think about the people that do suffer with mental health as well and you know people that didn't really deal well with confined spaces I know a lot of people personally who can't stay in the house you know they just cannot stay in the house and some of these people are up high story buildings and stuff it must have been dreadful and you know we really did count our blessings that we had this place and where where it's situated as well for us was was brilliant it's not that far from our home uh, along with the fact that it is actually in the city centre it was just brilliant. So other than training, I mean, you, we always see you like in commentary and yeah. you like being invited to a lot of boxing events. Have, have you missed, missed that yeah, part of the job? I no, no commentating's been, it's been awful really, you know, no being, you know, ringside at the fights or, or even in the studio at the zone's been, um, it's been a massive miss. It really has. And um, it's, uh, it's just been a bit surreal as well. You know, you're just expecting to, um, you know, get called up to go work on some fights shortly and there's just nothing happening, you know, it's almost like the world's came to a standstill, it's, it's, it's amazing stuff and uh, I don't know, you know, how much longer this can continue, you know, to the point where I feel like, <laughs> it's, it's pretty harsh, but, you know, you should let people that are okay and well and healthy, like, maybe get on with life, you know, and I don't know, it's a, maybe sounds a bit, you know, 
I know you hear people say when it's somebody in your family, it's a different story, but I'm very much only the strong survive anyway. So, I'm, you know. Uh, I suppose as well, it's like um, Sam Kainok for, for Kainok Boxing was saying at the beginning of lockdown that a lot of boxers would lose their livelihoods and maybe be forced into retirement because of the lockdown and the effects of it. Very, very possible. Very possible. Um, I mean, you really do need to admire these guys who have stayed in shape and they've continually trained throughout and, you know, they've maybe managed to get to a Jimmy Sorts, you know, and work out or whatever. You've got to take your hat off to them and especially these guys that are only making the kind of money that, you know, the top top flight, top tier guys are making, you know, the, if you didn't fight, you didn't get paid, you know. You know another thing is that the, the demand to get on these shows that are running just now, they've got so many boxers, they're going to be looking for the 50-50 fights when they can, um, so a lot of boxers are, are going to lose it. Do you s see any end to, to the lockdown and the, the things just turning back to normal anytime soon? Well, I mean, I guess very much like everybody else, just kind of like hoping for the best, you know, I'm a pretty optimistic person and, you know, I like to think that things are always going to be a little bit better on the other side. So, um, I, I mean, I assume that right now, I, I mean, it's no, it's no looking particularly good right now. Um, but, you know, you never know. I mean, things can change, as you've seen in the space of, you know, a short, short space of time. I just hope that a second wave doesn't bring again, you know, the same kind of things. I mean, we're seeing, we're seeing some things return to normal. Um, we noticed a few weeks ago in Russia there was a huge boxing competition going on with all the top Russian guys, and there's been other countries in the world that they're just getting on with their with their stuff. And I Ireland as well. I mean, I think that we we cannot fall behind them. We already trail a wee bit behind most of these people anyway. Um, and just for the sake of being overly cautious, you know, most of our athletes. I know a couple of boxers that apparently tested positive for COVID and had zero effects, none. Continually, continually trained. I think Stephen Nunes was one, maybe even. Um, who's a national one of our national champions and uh, had zero effects and he continually trained as, as normal. So, you know, um, I I really do hope that things can pick up really quickly. Macklin's driving me nuts. Uh, Macklin's one of the only kids I've ever met that, that gets upset when he doesn't get get to fight. And you know, and he's you know he's doing my head in now. Really, when when am I going to fight? When can I fight? You know, when are the fights going to start? It's, it's every every day now. So I was speaking to him and like before I'd even met him, it was a name that had popped up a few times and yeah. people were, were already aware of him and, and looking at his fights even when they were, when they were at the tournaments. People stayed behind to to, to watch him. Um, as a 13-year-old, do you think that, is he good at managing that pressure? Or did you just put it behind him and you're there in his corner? He doesn't need to think about so much about other people, like keeping an eye on him. I, I, he's, a, he's, a, he's always been like, he's always been his own entity. You know, a lot of people think that it's probably a lot of it's due to me, but in fact, it's probably the opposite. He, he was probably the one I encouraged to box least. At my three, I've got three sons, obviously. I like only took up boxing a few years ago, but Macklin told me when he was about four he was going to be a world champion, and you know, and I always wondered why he was like that, and he always made me run with my hood up when I, even taking up my nursery. He drawn me his hood up in shadow box, and I used to wonder like, oh, why? Where does this come from? Because it's not something I've like. You know, showed him and he badgered me to go to a boxing club. You know, as soon as he could start <laughs> voicing his opinion, take me to boxing, take me to boxing. And just, I mean, he was doing pull ups at four and five years old. And, you know, just like he had a six pack at, you know, at a really young age. And the first time I ever put him in a ring, I thought, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what he's made of now. And he was just like, it's like a duck to water, really. You know, I've never really quite seen anything like it. And like all my sort of 30 years, like some of the stuff that he's capable of, of doing and some of the stuff that he does in the ring, is that, you know, he's never lost a round. One round, he's never lost a round. If any of his fights have went to points, and not a lot of them have, um, he, w he wins unanimous, norm normally unanimous decision. He's never never seen him lose a round before. And most people didn't normally make it out of the first round, which is quite rare. And another rare thing as well, that for his weight and age and size, I've never seen a wee boy literally f knock a, another kid out. I mean, it's not a nice thing to see, if I'm going to be really honest. You know, in amateur boxing's brilliant that way, where bouts are normally stopped, but I've seen him like, lay people out, like knock them out, you know. Um, he knocked out a Russian number one in November in Ireland last year with a lethal body shot, you know, reverberated like around the whole place. It was I, I felt it, and I was a well-reputed body puncher. And, you know, and the setups are really impressive as well. You know, he went with a left hook to the head first to set it up and 
with the same hand landed the body shot and just dead unusual stuff for to see for a wee boy, you know, and he's hard and he's mentally tough and, you know, and no matter what it takes, you know, he's he's had to make weight and stuff a few times as well, you know. Maybe drop a kilo in a week, never an issue. Never I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I've never heard him complain about anything and he's a tough wee shit as well, you know, I've had a few I've had a few set to I've seen him there when he's I've I've clouted him a few a few as well and he's he's just got a really good mental state, you know, he's he's just a he's a tough wee shit and, and it, it helps him, you know, along with all his skills and his his um his natural talent I would say is um it's, it's remarkable stuff, man. Eh? It's, it's crazy. Sometimes I'm like, shit, like, where, did this, where did this wee guy come from? <laughs> so, Alex, you've been, um, I know for personally, like, how much support you've shown um, Cash, but if you go back to when Cash just won the British title, you were already calling for him and Lee, so you've been supporters of both Lee and him. So even a whole year and a bit before that fight was even coming ahead, you were, you were something because you were, you were using, basically, the commentary and your, like, to, to push for fights like that. Um, is that something that you, you like? I know it's a rhetorical question you're going to see, but is it something you like to see, like to, to see young boxers come through and you can sort of pick these fights like years in advance? It's tough. It is tough, mate, because, you know, in, in Scotland, we've, um, when we produce good boxers, we produce very good boxers. And they're normally in the lighter weight categories. And um, these these young guys are exceptional. They really are exceptional. They can hug their aim with anybody in the world. Um, and um, I just... There's just I seen something in that wee guy, and in, obviously, obviously in Lee McGregor as well, um, and I just thought, you know, no far similar to me and Wally Lemond, me and Craig Doherty. You know, I had to fight Ricky Butt, I had to fight three of my sort of like mates, kind of. But Wally Lemond and obviously Craig Doherty was a wee bit more personally close with. You know, Craig Doherty was my teammate at the Commonwealth Games, and Wally Lemond was my teammate in the national junior team. We travelled all over together. So, you know, fighting the guys was tough. And I know that Lee and Cash were, are quite matey as well. I know they've sparred in the past and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, when there's two Scottish fighters at the same weight and they are exceptionally talented or, you know, everybody's talking about them, to see them fight each other is always a... It goes back to Buchanan and Watt, you know, it's always something that's to see. And the passion and the everything that's on the lines, I, I don't think there's any, anything quite like it. So now Lee's he's recently announced he's going to be fighting now for the European Aye. title and Cash has just yesterday announced Aye. for his debut if we match him. Um, are you hoping that further down the line like maybe they, they could come back or do you think Aye. it's weights are going to be an issue? Aye, and stuff? I think weights will probably come into play. Lee's very big. He's he's a big, big lad. You know, he's the same height as me. He's um, I don't think he's got to be able to make bantamweight for another couple of years. I doubt it very, very much. He will develop and you know with training as well and eating normally when you're not in training camp you know you will get a wee bit bigger your muscle fibres will soak up more fuel and you know that's weight that isn't shifted easily it's no water and fat anymore you know so you know when you're training that much that often when you're a professional athlete your body changes over the years and, and you know it develops and um, it's something that I would certainly know um, tell any of the lads to do is try and hold their weight down too much it, it basically ruined my career in a sense and um, you know I'm in that sense I'm a wee bit concerned for Josh Taylor as well because Josh is getting to that age now where it just gets harder to make weight you know it gets harder <laughs> and it's and when you you can make you can always make the weight but performing at the weight is a different thing altogether it's all a different thing altogether sometimes or I remember well getting off the scales and just no recovering by the time you got to the ring Still feeling a bit lightheaded, still a wee bit dehydrated or whatever, and you know it's just no enough time. So you know I would advise any of the lads when it gets to the point where it starts to become just performance damaging, it's time to, it's time to go up. You kind of leave it too late either, or, or you don't recover. You know once you've went past that point, I don't feel you can come back for it. So it's really important that you get it right and you move up early enough. Aye. Do you think there's um, sometimes too much emphasis on making weight for like younger boxers, like especially at these tournaments? There's, there's guys that I know have passed out on the scales. Um, and it's, you just think like... Are they it's awful. So I had blackouts myself. So I, I, it was the last time I ever made weight. The last time I ever made super featherweight. No, the last time I ever made weight, sadly. last time I ever made super featherweight, I can't actually remember leaving the scales. And I woke up in my um, hotel room. I think four or five hours later, I'd missed like three meals. 
really important part of the, the time any you know rehydration and refueling the body to get ready for a match and um, I there was there was a couple of times that I can't remember a few things I blacked out once on a on a bench and I must have looked like a drunk in the in the in the meadows in Edinburgh I woke up on a bench and my playlist had finished and I clearly blacked out on a jog and had the plastic suit on and um, woke up with blue lips so it's, see all these things are. You need a brilliant team around about you, a great structured team that you trust and believe in as well. Because when you're controlling all that stuff yourself, it's, it's never going to end well. I mean, there was a young Thai boxer a few years ago, who was in uh, Jordan, and um, he passed away and he's found in, in the suit. And I know the, the, a guy that um, done Muay Thai, William Craig Dixon, from Scotland, that was there. Um, like when he came back, he just even affected him so much because he just felt like there wasn't too much, enough care and he preventing that from happening. So, um, Finally, how like your your gym's been up for how long? It's just a couple of years now. Um, how does it feel coming in and, and spending this time? Not just with, with your boys, but aye. with the other boxers and that. Yeah, I know they've also they have a close aye. relationship with you and like oh, very much so. You know, with um, big credit to Paddy uh, Jamel as well. You know, our other coach who's fantastic and you know everybody's gelled so well. We're really like a big family. You know, it's a it's a great spirit up here, a great team. There's never any feeling a you know somebody doesn't belong here and it's a very small team and we, we didn't go past that you know and um, I've certainly got high hopes for you know everybody in here you know and, and we're, we're very very lucky with the talent that we've got as well you know um, obviously Macklin, Alex and Saul, Saul Saur a future future champion for me as well was devastating puncher and former world champion three-time world champion kickboxer as well and um, you know, Anna Vincenti that you interviewed earlier was an Olympian. Oh, she's already an Olympian and a phenomenal athlete. Just a phenomenal athlete. Um, never gets tired. Unbelievable engine, drive, passion, determination. So, and obviously Chloe's um, results speak for themselves. And you know, she's um, she's coming on a ton as well. Europeans hopefully coming up for her soon. And I, I mean, the it's, you know, it's, it's endless. Um, We've got unbelievable talent and hopefully we can do wonders with them, aye. It does look good at the tournaments when you turn up and you've got your kits on and stuff. Aye. It's like you know, it turns heads aye. and you see your, your guys. I've seen a few of the tournaments also. Seeing so when you took your um, Alex was fighting and Lockie and aye. then yeah. um, Fabrizio and Juries yeah. and that. Aye. So um, all the best. Is I hope the tournament starts soon because it's so. like it's it'd be good to see some of the boys and yeah, actually no Macklin's well, twitching. Yeah, Stay my nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but no doubt I'll see you oh, yeah, see you soon and thanks for, for letting me come in and chat to you may have seen in the last few days me speaking to Ahmed the Black Assassin whether here is a full interview with him discussing the possibility of him fighting Joe Laws at the October 17th Matchroom show alright guys look who I banged didn't he just finished his PTs we got to have you jog on the, the banks of the Clyde. Uh, Ahmed, the black assassin, whoever, um, is joining me in JTV Friday Night Boxing. Ahmed, how you doing? I'm all right, man. How are you? I'm good, man. It's a nice day. It's a bit early for me, but I know you've been up bright and early doing PTs. Yeah, I've been up since morning, yes. Yeah, nice sunny day today as well, so it's good. So, first of all, like um, a few days ago it was announced uh, Hannah Rankin's going to be fighting for a, a big title for her. Um, and her mate, Cash Farouk, is going to be making his debut for Matchroom. Um, would you be looking forward to that event first? Yeah, it's a good good card. Good opportunity for Hana to get another another world title. And obviously for Kaj to get himself out there again. So yeah, looking forward to it. So you've seen Hana on the, the, the gym in the last week or so. How's she getting on? I was actually sparring with her the other day. <laughs> we sparred on Sunday. So it's good. <laughs> Hana stuff. She was coming for it as well. So yeah. Um, so obviously we had the, the kind of boxing special. We missed you because you were in early and I was I was going in later. Um, but when I spoke to Sam, um, one of the things he said about you is that you would he's looking for a fight and that you would take a fight um, in a moment's notice. And I know for experience, you took the Harry Davis fight with less than twenty four hours notice, and it was during Ramadan and you just started fasting and stuff. Um, so yesterday, gloves are red. Noticed that uh, Joe Law doesn't have an opponent. <laughs> Um, for the same bill that Akasha and uh, Hannah are going to be fighting on, um, and they said that the, you'd be a good opponent, which we second, and I know that Kyne Boxing Scotland put it saying that they would take that fight if available. Um, so what are your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would take that fight any time, yeah. I need that fight right now. 
been out since what when was my last fight february i think it was so yeah i'll take that fight anytime it's just up to them now if they take the fight the thing is we use it you, you're constantly training and ready for fights yeah. um the other thing that's always the always things that go against we spoke about it numerous times and um, but this year your your ibf title um had to get scrapped because of uh, coronavirus um so you're somebody that's that's looking to to sort of break through into that environment and right now the demand um for fighters it's difficult to get on shows like us um but with joe law um i think it would be an amazing 50 50 fight get in there um but you obviously think you won it yeah i'll win that fight it's a tough fight i've watched his few fight, some of his fights the other night it's good it's a tough guy he just comes to fight and i'd like to fight as well so would be a good fight I've been watching I'm watching some of his stuff on social media. The funny thing is, is before I'd even seen this, I'd seen that he was on the bill and followed him just because I was interested, but I didn't know too much about him. I was watching some of his stuff on Instagram. And he's quite a funny guy as well. He's kind of like, he's, he's kind of looks like he's a bit yeah, a performer as well. Someday. And I know you outside the ring, and I know that that's, that's what you like. But when it comes to getting in the ring, it's just to get down to business and what. But... If you, Cash, and Tana were on the same bill, would you what, share a minibus then, or would you be allowed to, or what, how would that work? I don't know. <laughs> we just meet there. <laughs> do you think it'll go ahead, or do you think this is, like, seriously, would you, do you think that, I know you've been looking for a fight, and this may be an opportunity, but there's, there's obvious, as I said, there's, there's, there's such a demand to get for boxers to fight, but, I mean, we've had Paul Keane's been on some of the shows, and uh, Monty Ogilvy, um Gary Maguire was on a show a few weeks ago as well. So, do you think it's now your turn to turn up there? Yeah, it's my turn. I've been waiting for a fight since lockdown started. I've been training, been running. So, my weight, I'm not far off my weight as well. So, if the fight happens, I'll be ready for it any time. So and I know that... Them, if they take the fight, which I don't think they will. You don't think they will? I don't think they will, no. So, it's better to just put my name there. And Why do you think that is? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't think they will. I just don't think they will. So I know Matchroom have they've applied for an audience for this. I'd, God knows if they'll they'll get it. Um, but would that make a difference to you? Like um, if you were fighting in front of an audience or fighting what? Obviously, it's better to fight when everyone is there supporting you, cheering you on. But if there's no audience, fight is a fight. If you need to fight, I would just get in there, do the job, get the job done. Get home. What's the time scale, do you think, that, like, because it's, it's obviously it's like four weeks away for that event. Um, and as, as far as we know, Joe's not got a, a fighter. Um, they've maybe got some people in mind, but um, it's, it's four weeks enough to prepare for a fight like that? Ah, it's more than enough, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I've been training already, started sparring. So, yeah, it's just starting. I'll start picking up everything from now on, just in case anything happens but I'll be good I'll be fit and ready to go the thing is, is I was, when I speak to Jay Carrigan McFarlane he was saying that he had fights lined up and then they fell through and it was just getting a bit frustrating um, Sam at the beginning of the year uh, beginning of the lockdown was saying that it's a difficult time for boxers because I mean this is how you make your money um, I know you've been doing PTs and that but at the same time you want to fight and you want to go out there and perform and you want to break through so um, it's a brilliant opportunity if it comes because it's like it's, it's on a, a matchroom show um, so let's here's hoping that it happens and I'm trying I'll try and come regardless I'm, I'm even thinking they just book hotels just in case they let us they let us come because um, it'd be good it'd be amazing for me because like, you and Cash have, any, have you fought in the same show before? I've not fought in the same show before no we've been waiting for this time to happen so I hope they take the fight <laughs> yeah, that'd be, it'd be good to have you Cash and Hannah yeah, yeah. I've said to I've said to my mate Yusuf that um It'd be good for us because it saves money in tickets if we get to go. We just yeah. buy a lot. Um, but we probably bring a team down. Uh, so anyway, Ahmed, uh, thanks for, for coming talking to me. And hopefully we get... That's a good Friday night. Hopefully by Friday night there's at least something. Uh, but cheers for talking to me, man. Cheers, 
Okay, so there has been tons of boxing news in Scotland. Uh, we've got Lee McGregor, Martin Hartkin, Cash Farouk and Hannah Rankin all due up um, for fights. If you do have boxing news, you can send it to us by WhatsApp at 079 You can message us on JATV Raw's Facebook page and JATV's Facebook page or uh, you can email contact at jtvscotland.com. That's it from me. I'm about to take some pills. I've got a sore head um, and I will catch you next week for JTV Raw's Friday Night Box. Brave, 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 brave.